We really had total confidence in, in our home inspector for that house. Look at this. Oh, God. I've got a really bad feeling we're going to be opening up quite a bit in this house. The house of our dreams became the house of our nightmares. Oh, my God. Oh, this is really not what I wanted to see. This house is everything we've worked for, and it's all of our money. And we trusted a man that let us down. Kristen and Grant looking for that first house before they get married because I guess they wanted that home then put on the wedding. However, that wedding got just a little stretched out due to problems that started to exist in the home. They chose to live downtown. They want that area. They want to be fast to work. They don't want to spend a lot of money on gas, pollute the environment. They're thinking right. They brought in a home inspector to do a whole home inspection to make sure the house they're buying is good. Things start to fall apart enough to actually send me emails to come in and take a look. All right, what am I going to do? I'm going to come in. I'm going to take a real good look at this. I'm going to use all the right tools. I'm going to find out what's right, what's wrong, what I have to do to fix it, and how I'm going to make it right. We met each other in photography school about seven years ago. We fell in love over darkroom chemicals and film processing and, and late nights shooting products in the studio. We lived and we worked downtown and we were very, you know, downtown centric. We don't have a car and we wanted to be close to transit and restaurants and nightlife and all the things that we love about the city. When we started looking for a house, there were a few major points that we wanted to hit. Backyard was one big thing. Uh, garage was a huge thing. When we first started looking for a home, we wanted to get something interesting, and I love that it was a converted storefront. We just really wanted to own. That was that was the big thing. We really wanted to have a, a space that was actually ours. We were saving for two big things. We wanted to buy a new home, and we were also getting married. And uh, you know, budgeted really accordingly, trying to be able to achieve both of these things. Our price range didn't offer you know a lot to be desired. We uh, saw a lot of really bad houses. So when we saw this house, it was like a shining beacon. It was this little gem, and we walked in and went, oh my goodness, it's fantastic. It's so much better than everything else we'd seen. We just fell in love the instant we walked in. So we got an inspection as soon as possible. When I was walking around with the home inspector, he didn't point out a lot of things. There was a couple holes in the back wall of the house out into the backyard where some cables and electrical and things like that ran out. And he advised us that we should spray foam it. So we spray foamed that. There wasn't a whole lot of issues with the house. We really had total confidence in, in our home inspector. And he thought the house was as great as we thought it was. You must be Grant. I am. I'm Mike. Mike, nice Kristen. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. A little bit of a windy day. Can we start off inside? Sure. Fine. Thank you. If he told us to do things, we would have done them. He gives us a little list. You know, that's what we pay him for. Ah, I see why you found the place and why you like it. See, looks are deceiving my world. Can you tell me some of the problems you're having now? Sure. Water. Water. <laughs> water. It seems like all of our, our problems are water related. Our first morning in the house, we were super excited. You know, it had been a very light night, late night moving in, and we were starting to unpack. And that is when we started to notice a few issues. We started to run the dishwasher. It ran for a good solid 10 minutes and then stopped, never to work again. I was starting to put things away underneath the sink in the bathroom, and there was a great big puddle underneath the sink. Being fairly handy people, we go to the hardware store, pick up what we need, and we fix it. None of these issues had been brought up in the report, so we didn't know what other things that we were going to expect. Hmm, things that catch my eyes. So there's our skylight. The yes. skylight's leaking right there. And I can see the ripple tape across here, which tells me there's a lot of moisture issues here. Mm -hmm. New tub, new faucets. Can I see in here? Yeah. So laundry, that's a big unit, isn't it? Okay, your your all your plumbing 
It's tied into this wall here, which means it's tied into here. So here's the big issue I see. I've said this a thousand times. Don't put it on the second floor. If that ever leaks, that's going to cause huge amounts of damage. And two, let me guess, when it's running, it shakes your house. Yeah. Because it's not on concrete. Where were you leaking? In our bedroom. In our bedroom. We were sitting downstairs watching television, and the, t and the dryer had been on forever. So I went into our bedroom to get a laundry basket to remove some of the items from the dryer. And I turned on the light in the bedroom and looked up. And there was a huge bubble in our ceiling. And I freaked out. I heard Kristen scream my name. So I ran upstairs. The bubble just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When I poked the bubble in the ceiling and water started running down my arm and gushing. There was water everywhere. And we lost it. Is there a roof leak? You know, is there water coming in? Why is, like, there's no water above our bedroom ceiling. Why would there be water there? So we were super worried. We had no one to call and no idea what the problem was or any idea of how to fix it. Has it leaked since? Every time we do laundry. Every time we do laundry? OK, that's really weird. OK, I that's will nice. look at that. Let's go see the basement. This was insurmountable odds to us. We had no idea what to do. In order to fix our house, we would have to sacrifice parts of our wedding. I just didn't want it to cost Kristen the wedding of her dreams. It was scary. It was a very scary time. Nice old sink, by the way. Yeah, we love, love the sink. <laughs> uh, did you know that's all lead? No. no. All the strain is lead. What? Uh, that's all lead. 100% lead. Don't touch it, please, because it'll, it'll absorb in your skin. I don't like that you don't have a proper fire stop from this house to the next door house. Very old wood, this stuff will burn. Talk about kindling, that's what this will burn. Because the floor joists run through, that fire can continue through. When you're looking at a fire stop, just stop it long enough for the fire department to possibly come in and stop it here. But if it can quickly and easily go next door, they're on fire. Just like that. Look at this. Come here. What do you see? The other house completely? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next door neighbor's basement. That's your next door neighbor's basement. I have a flashlight. I can go around. I got a camera. I can take pictures, and I can go, hey, you guys may not want this house. You know, one thing after another, after another, after another, and we didn't know what to do. Everything was crumbling around us. We had a money pit of a house, and everything was just going so horribly wrong. So we have a register return, and we have another return. There's another one over yes. there. OK, that's not a good sign. We don't want two returns out front here. We only need one. I always encourage the inspector, because you're not going to do damage, to pull her up. Wow, wow, wow. I want you to take a look at your air return. I want you to see what you're breathing. Oh, my god. It's like an inch deep. But inch deep of what? Dust. Dust? Dust. Yeah. You want to take a look? Oh, my God. That's disgusting. Now, I'm going to really look into the HVAC. Uh, did the home inspector point that out? No. no. Mm. Took a lot of good pictures, I have to say. I don't want to knock them, because it's one of the better reports that I've, I've looked at. However, I don't see enough in writing. As a matter of fact, in writing, it was very shallow, very shallow on the writing. Giving you a recommendation on the roof that you probably have a good five years, when the pictures I see that he took, I can look at the picture and go, that's a problem. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to get my tools. Uh, so the next time I bring you in, I'm going to show you everything I did find and just what I have to do to fix it, which makes me a little nervous. I'm feeling overwhelmed that w there was a lot more wrong just in Mike's first glance at our house than I ever expected. It's very frightening. I feel like this house was really shiny and perfect, but underneath of all that, it seems like it was the lemon. You guys may not want this house. Underneath the hood is still a crappy old engine. How many times do I got to come in and look at something that looks so good and then just do so much damage to it to fix it to make it look the same again? All right, I'm ready to play. So what do we have? We have moisture here. 
Let's fall it over the side. Boom, we see it again. Let's fall it up the wall. We see it, we see it, we see it. We know it's coming up from the top. Now, we're seeing a lot of water signs, but as it darkens, this is an area that's starting to mold. And this was an area that they plastered, so we're gonna start, I mean, the plaster just loves mold. Just, well, it just thrives on it. It's like, oh, stay, give me more and more. That's what plaster's like, and that's why you're gonna see it more here. Now, real simple is, let's step outside for a second. I'm gonna show you something. Something that caught my eye walking up to the house is this is how the place used to look like. The before, after, before, after. But that corner right there is leaking inside. It's literally coming down right in that corner, right down all this new wonderful wood and dripping in inside, not only in here, but inside on the other side of the window. Yeah, we have real good reasons to use this. So I pull out my IR camera just to do a quick look. Just gonna look on the outside wall. I have a very cold spot right there. That one is over here. And that's the odd thing about that. That is the joining. This is part of the other house. Oh, it's because he's renovating. He's got his, all the windows taken out and all the cool air is coming in. So I'm seeing that easy. Well, this is a semi-detached home, so there's gonna be ductwork, electrical, plumbing for both units inside the shared wall. Depending on what we have to do, it may affect the neighbors, so we'll have to keep them in the loop. To have the inspector come in and not notice that we don't have a proper fire stop in between the houses, like, you just don't want, I can see next door. And then I look over and I see, not only next door, but I see the asbestos. Let's see just how clear my camera can take that shot. Now, if I can clearly see that, how come nobody else did? Being in construction all these years that I've done this, in an older home like this, we're going to normally see anything that runs in the wall wrapped by asbestos. And that's what they're going to do is wrap that ductwork to hold, help hold that heat in, especially in between units. The inspector, he's not qualified to look for asbestos, but some of them have knowledge about it. Come downstairs. Take a look up. Hey, go. There it is. There's the wrap. Mr. Holmes, you down there? Oh, I got all kinds of problems here, Mr. Bennett. I could actually see you as walking in, buddy. Yeah, watch your hand on the lights. This okay. is going to be an issue. So we have a triple brick construction. It's very old. We're around 1915, 1917 build. Yep. Triple brick on the foundation wall. Very clear. Double brick as it continues up. There's no doubt in my mind I'm going to be opening a pass for plumbing, pass for the HVAC, and just see just how bad that roof is up there. I've got a really bad feeling we're going to be opening up quite a bit in this house. There are a couple really strange things in the house. And uh, it's funny, you know how many times I've walked around this toilet? Yeah. Is that I, functioning? Yes. Get out of here. But there is a lock on the basement door, so I guess you could consider it a one-piece bathroom. That toilet's working. That is awesome. Yeah. Your own private What a selling bathroom. bonus, eh? <laughs> Buy this house. Something that just caught my eye. Yeah. You see right there? You got asbestos. I have asbestos. Oh, God. Yeah. So we're into a kind of a big one here. But okay. Let's bring everyone in. Let's get ready to go. I think we're in for one hell of a job on this house. Well, today's all about worker safety, really. We're removing the asbestos that's within these walls. This is the first thing we want to do, not only to protect my workers, but it's also the people living here. They want to hang pictures. They want to do a renovation in the future. We want to make sure that they're safe by removing all the asbestos in the house. We have Alliance here today. They're going to start removing drywall. They're going to actually do exploratory to make sure that there's nothing else within these walls. Anytime you see that there's paper wrapped around ductwork, leave it alone. Get it tested. You do not want to breathe that in, and you definitely don't want it in your house. What Alliance wants to do is remove the entire duct line. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll spray the paper down and start taking the paper off if they have full access 360 degrees around that pipe. They don't have that access here. So Alliance will remove the whole pipe, ensuring that they're not leaving any paper on the back of it. Because they can't see through the other unit, 
how do we know we're getting it out? So it's the right call to make. They remove all the duct, making sure that any asbestos left on that is completely gone, removed properly. So this is what happens when you hire the wrong people, eh? Really, Mike, there's a, there's a lot going on on this roof. Well, this is just a patch after patch after patch. Oh, this just sucks. Tell me, tell me we're going to be pulling the whole thing. It looks like it, Mike. Now, look at the chimney. Holy cow. Oh, this is really not what I wanted to see. I saw pictures of the inspector being up here. He really didn't say too much about the roof. He said something about the chimney. The skylights are shot. The curbs aren't built properly. I, I don't really understand all this extension on the curbs. I bet you it was one big skylight at one time. So now we're going to probably have to change that structure and put in a proper curb mount for a proper skylight like they attempted to do over here. And that's not the way to throw a patch on there. No, th this is there. just oxidized asphalt, right? So every one of these cracks, uh, because th that asphalt expands and contracts differently than the roofing materials, once it dries out, it splits, it's a leak. We usually refer to the, these patch type roofs as leak factories. Like the, the, there's a leak in every corner, every spot of this roof. Nothing like doing a major renovation downstairs and spending a fortune of money to make it look good and not protecting it. It's probably leaked for years. I'm really worried we pulled this up and I've got, I've got rot, I've got mold. The only uh, saving grace here is that the roof does have a good natural slope, which you know is, is usually a good sign. You know, often we've seen projects in the past where the roof has no slope, you're in a major structure. So this is a big job for you. It's a huge job. Well, part of the problem here, too, is accessibility. Like, there's not very good access to these homes. Uh, we've got a small alleyway in the back, and we've got a very busy downtown street out front. So we're doing a couple of test cuts. Uh, we did one on a high, at the high point of the roof, and we're doing one here at the low point of the roof. With these tight, uh, um, narrow, or bad access uh, areas, it's very co you know, common to see multiple areas of roofing on, on these homes, because uh, it's very difficult to get rid of the garbage. Uh, years of roofing, there's probably about uh, three or four roofs we're looking at, layer upon layer, the old style uh, tar and paper, and then with the more modern stuff up top. Really, it's just really sloppy workmanship. Well, Gary. How are you, Mike? Oh, you know what? I've had better days. I was just on the roof. I don't feel good. <laughs> when I walked in the house the very first time, watch your head on those lights. I had a return here and a return here. So I know that we don't want to return so close to another return. They're not getting enough air throughout the whole house. So they added one. It's not working. Though. Yeah, but did you, you see now. the crap in there? That's the return. The supply is the same thing. OK, there's fur in there. It's just circulating through the whole house. And probably it looks like for years people smoked in here, too. You yeah. can see the buildup on the back side of the dock, like the yellow. I don't even want to touch it. I don't even want to wipe it. You already know what I see, right? Yeah. All the connections going to the upstairs are all disconnected. They're all got even gaps and openings in them, every one of them. Well, no, we have to explain so they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're freezing just, upstairs. Yeah, they're all bleeding down here. Well, I think we're in for one hell of a job on this house. And it looked beautiful. I'll pull this down right away. looking for the uh, dryer line. We can't see the exit of the dryer exhaust, so right now I'm just trying to see where the connection's made in the ceiling and see which way it goes. Every time they turn the dryer on, it seems like they had a leak, so we're not sure what's causing the leak. It was definitely water coming in here, but it's also something to do with the dryer. I see a lot of water drips on the deck itself. Now, one good thing is, Steve will be happy about it. It looks like the deck is solid. It looks like we're not replacing the deck, but you can see the water stains right here where all the water came down. You can see it on the side of the joist. You can see it on the deck. That roof, it's a good thing we're replacing it. I still have to find that dryer line, though. Look at the water stains there. Oh. OK, here's where we found the connection. It's right where the leak happened. You can see the water stains happening here, which means I know that from this connection, where it elbows up, I can tell with a measuring tape that's where it ties into the old cast iron stack. Is it wrong? Absolutely. 
Look where it's going through the roof with the cast. Of course. She said it leaked every time she used the dryer. If it's on a down run, condensation is going to build up not only from that moist air, but from the hot and cold meeting. And that's just going to drip onto the drywall and slowly come in the bedroom. I'm moving the wash and the dryer to the basement where we have proper floor drainage, so we don't even need this vent here. I see they took the, the old duck out, which is good. Yeah, now we had to take out the neighbors too, because anything on this wall, it was covered in asbestos. All right, so you need to get into this wall. All our heating runs, all our returns for the upstairs are all going in these walls. So how much of this wall do you need down, brother? Well, we got to start over here. All right. So we're going to be right in this section here. Yep. And we're going to walk all the way down. All this. Um, OK. Now, if we can, we got to <laughs> stop here, because this is obviously open, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And then we're going to start again here. And we're going to come all the way right to there. Is that it? Is that all we have to do? Uh, for this side of the wall. OK, can you lose the spray paint? You're not going on that wall in the <laughs> no, ceiling, no, are you? No, no, not going on that wall. Full height? Full height. Boys! We got some work to do. The reasoning why I'm asking Damon to open up this complete wall, we had drawings done. We had heat load drawings done. What was here wasn't sufficient for the furnace that we have. So it all has to be taken out and recalculated, and all new heating runs got to be installed. You guys ready? I'm ready, ready. Dab. A little dab will do you. And don't forget, I'm always watching. Go get him, Yvonne. Oh. <laughs> oh, boys, 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 boys. I said everything above this line. We're actually not demoing the bottom line. Who did this one? Rob. <laughs> That's your name, dude. <laughs> You're lucky we're tearing it all down. OK. <laughs> oh, it's hard enough. OK, Damon, so this is what I found. Um, Old original under sink, uh, yeah. lead pipe. Lead pipe. Uh, the vent has been actually eliminated. Yeah. Original cast iron stack uh, that's, that has not been removed, which puzzles me to be honest, because if someone did break this yeah. and made some changes here, why would they leave this, right? So I'm running a video camera from the original stack. Um, I do see issues underground. Uh, the original sections are actually cracked and misaligned. Uh, allowing sewage to actually accumulate and, and potentially form a blockage. I will have those sections excavated and replaced with a new PVC material. I do want to excavate where that uh, one piece bathroom is set up. <laughs> Don't lose that. That's my favorite <laughs> piece of this whole house, <laughs> is my own private bathroom down here. God. Okay. So we are in the neighbor's house. Okay. Let me come through here. I am now burglaring his house. Now he understands that I might have to come over here. Wow. Full gut on this side. It's actually almost going to help us. And it's definitely going to help these guys on their side as well. Well, it looks like we're going to get to know the neighbors pretty well here, guys. Now, we tried to protect as much as we could of your existing stuff, and we did have to take down quite a bit of wow. things. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is just the beginning. If we'd known now all the problems of this house, there is no way we would have bought this house. What is this? This is a hole in the floor. It's just completely overwhelming. Completely overwhelming. OK, here's what we need to do. We need to fire stop in between the two units. What we're going to have to do, unfortunately, is remove everything that's already existing here. As you can see, this plate here 
These studs here are on our side of the house. This wall here is the neighbor's side. I'm gonna have to frame the neighbor's side, which is actually helping him at this point. I'm gonna frame it 16 inch on center. I'm then gonna add rock saw insulation, which is a fire resistance as well. So at this point, we're framed. We have our insulation in. Now it's our 5 8 drywall. Now we can start framing on our side of the room. When I said snug, you guys made it snug. <laughs> Five-eighths drywall is not going to stop fire from getting through. It's just to give people time enough to get out of the house. This is actually a fire-grade caulking. Oxygen feeds a fire, and by cutting off any access oxygen has to that fire, we're stopping it and keeping it from spreading between two houses. So once we get our fire stopped in, Gary can continue his duct work. But back here, we ran into a bit of an issue. It then turns into a single wall. So it's the width of a two by four. When I build a proper firewall, there will not be enough room for the ductwork. I've talked to Gary, I've talked to the inspector. All the ductwork that originally went through this wall is gonna be brought into the outside wall over on this side now. So at this point, I have to now demo this wall so Gary can reroute everything that was gonna come up here, run it back over there and back upstairs where it's needed. The original design here had no returns upstairs, only supplies. So we're actually adding new returns to the second floor. That's our, our square ducting, our 4 by 10s that's running from the basement up to the first floor all the way up to the second, and then we're panning across using the joists. So we're going to create a lot better airflow on the second floor by putting those returns in each room and one main one in the hallway. So in the end, they're going to get better heating, better cooling, and it'll be a lot more comfortable. I've got all my drains excavated now. Um, the reason, obviously, video camera indicated problems underground. So having everything exposed, I can I can replace the drains, upgrade them, because I did also have other issues, uh, cracks in the clay pipe uh, and misalignments. I'm also wrapping in uh, a floor drain for the furnace. Um, I will also have another floor drain installed at the back. So this house will actually benefit from two floor drains. Because we're maintaining the, uh, the original setup, uh, the laundry sink and faucet stays, but the lead pipe that was underneath has been removed and we upgraded that to ABS. And because the, the sink and faucet is in a good shape, there's no reason to, uh, to get rid of it. It's, it's actually a solid piece of cast iron, so we'll maintain that. Come on up, Mr. Yvonne. OK, let's go look at this chimney, buddy. Now, you can imagine, over 100 years, no one has touched this chimney, only to parge over it. And it is worse for wear. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this down brick by brick until you hit something solid, and I want you to rebuild it. Well, this chimney looks pretty old. It's in really bad condition. You can tell that water has penetrated and totally deteriorated all the brick here. That could happen because of a couple of reasons. Uh, not a proper cap on the top with a drip edge to allow the water to flow away from the brick. Second reason, they parged over the brick instead of replacing it. You should never parge over a deteriorated brick. That's not a way to fix it. We've gone ahead and removed all the old brick. So all we have to do from here is re-brick it, put a cap, and we're done. For the next three days, I've got one word, roof.
Uh, not really any surprises. We sort of, uh, with our test cuts prior, we sort of knew what we were into. Uh, removal is going fairly well. We've got another extremely warm day. Uh, it's supposed to feel like 40 some odd degrees uh, with the humidex, so uh, the process is going to be a little slower. Once we finish up with the removal, Damon and the crew are going to get up here and start the uh, framing work. So uh, we're off to a good start. Nicole, you're going to be cutting for us. Okay. And you and me are going to be laying down this wall. We're going to start with this wall, bring it right on down. We're in 40 degree weather. We're dying up here. I'm giving the guys as many breaks as we can, but we're still trying to accomplish getting this covered because we have a good day today. It doesn't mean necessarily we're gonna have a good day coming up. There's a really simple solution why we had to put up this knee wall. It's to separate the two roofs. Now there's some defined lines. We have our house on this side of the barrier and their house on the other. That thing is not going anywhere. So what's going to happen after we're done the roof? So Steve has his membrane on, which is considered a vapor barrier. I then spray foam right to the deck. That is also a vapor barrier. Wood needs to breathe. How do you do that to a flat roof that's never been meant to vent? Well, this is what we're doing here. We're cross strapping. So by bringing our first two by fours perpendicular over our rafters, and then we strap the other way with our next row, we're treating this little space here like an attic, making sure it breathes. Venting at the bottom, giving an exhaust at this end with a pipe sticking out of the roof, it allows the whole zone to breathe. And that is exactly what we want, and that's exactly what we have to do. Fill the end there, fill this side, let's start tarping it, okay? Don't walk in and go, oh, new kitchen, new bathroom, new, new, new. It's like, what did they do beyond it? Take a look. Calm down. Oh, look, I can see the neighbor. Take a look at the ducks. Oh, they're really dirty. Go to the roof. Take a look to see if they protected what they did inside, which they didn't. These are key things that says everything that's underneath it is bad. I didn't even know what a home inspection should be like until Mike walked through my house. He looked everywhere, he saw everything. Had you have had the right inspector in here, I guarantee you wouldn't have bought this place. But we'll make it right. We're Thank gonna take good care so of you guys. Much. I can already feel it almost, the, the weight lifting. Well, that's not the way to do a fire stop. You might need some mortar on that eventually. So here's my plan for the fire stop. What I want to do is, since we have brick in every void, let's use it. I don't want to take it out, put insulation up there, and then do a fire stop on top of that. What I want to do is go right over top of the brick with cement board. Take the cement board. I want it to cut per size. I want it to lap over the foundation here. We want to get by the wood, right? What we'll do is we'll use a fire caulking to go around it. What they did is they brought brick right up, which is a great surface, but you see gaps. We could see right into our neighbor's side. It's a complete void right through. It's almost like one open basement at that point. That's what we're trying to avoid here. Now what we're doing is we're gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm now gonna add rock salt. So the only thing to hold rock salt in is your framing. So we built a little frame here. We're gonna bring it up into our base, use a fireproof rock salt, 5 eighths drywall over the top. It gives a protection from fire from one side to the other. Mike mentioned that there's uh, was some water damage on the interior of the home in this corner. Um, from the top of the roof looking down, we can see that there's actually a hydro mass coming through this little lower roof area. We know that the problem is lo like localized around that post, so we're going to concentrate in that area, do some resealing or recaulking, and uh, stop the water from coming in.
Last piece of plywood has gone in. That means the roof is now sheeted and it's vented. So Steve now comes in, starts his cant, and actually starts waterproofing this roof today, which is fantastic. First thing first is Martin's here today. We have to bring our plumbing stack through the roof, so the plumbing breeze. That's got to happen before Steve can start today. Here we go. Basically, we have three skylights. We've reframed the curbs to uh, get to a standard size. Holy crap! Warm? Oh, it is freaking hot in here all of a sudden. No breeze anymore. This particular skylight is uh, different than the other two because this is actually a venting unit, uh, which allows us to manually open and close it uh, due to being over top of a bathroom. Just below me actually is the shower, so having the ability to open it will reduce that uh, condensation. In uh, you know, warmer days, this can open up like a roof vent and you can exhaust a lot of the warm air to the house. Oh, ho, 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 feel that breeze. At this point, we're hanging up our main duct. This is our return duct, so we're getting this in. All our roughing's done. Everything's brought down to the basement. So at this point, we get our supply duct up, and we're done. We're out of here. I've never drywalled one wall so many times in my life. But this is what you have to do for fireproofing. At the other end, we had a double wall. We were able to put a firewall in between the two walls. This time, at this end of the house, we have a two by four wall. That means double five eighths, but it doesn't stop there. We had a jog in the wall. I want to build that out with a quarter inch. So we've used quarter inch drywall in between the two five eighths drywall that I need by code for fire stop to add in between. So that means three layers of drywall on this one wall. Last sheets are going up now. Push, 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 push. You can do it. You got a quarter inch to go. You're there. You're good. OK, good. Every roof is one of a kind. There, there is no standard profile or standard stock uh, flashing that can be purchased for any individual roof. So this has all been measured to, to suit and then custom fabricated to fit. We are so excited for Mike to come and help us and make sure that it's all going to be right. Mike's coming in and saving us. He's like a superhero, big time. Without him, we would be in big, big trouble. Wow, with a capital W. What a difference, isn't it? Wow. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. 40 degree weather. The day we were up ah. here framing this, ah. 40 degrees. Did you I think you were in New Orleans again or what? Well, Steve comes up to me at one point and he goes, you know, you guys should get inside. You don't have roofer skin, eh? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm a little red. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Look at the metal. I know. It's, the... it's perfect. Good job. Thank you very much, sir. Good job. Oh, well. I'm telling you, see all my, all my guys getting so good. Makes my day. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. Hi, hey guys. Oh, Grant, oh. nice to see you. Oh, oh, nice to see you again, Mike. Oh, look at you. We got uh, hugs already. Good to see you. How you doing, Chris? Good. 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 Well, well, let's start outside. We know we had a, an issue with water coming down the side here. They uh, threw the ladder up there and caulked everything in sight. It rained like hell in the last, what, two weeks? Yeah. It's not coming in. Any questions <laughs> before I bring you in? 
No. Nope. Just excited to see the house. You ready to come home? Yes. Yeah, we're so ready to, ready to come home. We've only owned our home for six months, and one third of that time uh, we've been out for construction. So we're really excited to be back in our house. After you, it's neat, it's clean, and it pretty well looks like it when we left it. It looks, looks great. Awesome. It's kind of surreal coming in and, and knowing that there's been a lot of work done and not seeing a lot of changes. But knowing that everything underneath that was wrong is fixed is just awesome. We're so thankful. Now these guys worked all weekend. Last week was a killer week for these guys. They really worked a lot of hours this weekend. So they're a little tired, but they love what they do and they wanted to get you home. So if you want to give anyone a hug, you want to give them a big oh, hug. They're all going to hug. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start in the basement and work our way up, OK? okay. Sure. All right, after you. We have a laundry room. Yeah. <laughs> and our sink's still here. Uh, well, why not? There's nothing wrong with your sink. We love, love that, that sink. Guys, <laughs> I knew you would. I loved it, too. Well, that was in stereo, you know? That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know that every single piece of ductwork was pulled out of your house. Never mind the asbestos yeah. that was in there. Because remember, this, just, this story just started to pile up and pile up, didn't it? But I can tell you how much junk was in your other ductwork. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even want to know. You don't even want to see no. that. That's no. like the guys were gagging down here no. when they're taking it down. It's that, see, it's out of sight, out of mind, right? Yeah. It's out of, you don't know it. Every single piece is new. Not only is it new, it is just completely sealed the way it should be. No, there's no hole here. This is a buff code. The scope of redesigning an HVAC system for a 100-year-old house to meet modern-day standards and modern-day code is incredible. I uh -huh. noticed there's no toilet anymore. I had to get rid of my toilet. I oh. love the toilet down here. It was the biggest bathroom I could have ever wanted. It was but incredible. It but wasn't mine. He had his privacy. He was telling everyone, <laughs> I'm going to Leave the washroom. Leave me alone down here. <laughs> <laughs> now, for all your plumbing, we've removed the lead. We've taken everything up to code, even above code. And that's what we're about. Is that, I hear so many people say, Mike, you, know, just, you do too much. It's like, no, I do it like it's my house. Mike and, and Damon and the crew are just little angels, you know what I mean? They've they've come in and they've pulled us out of this uh, this slump and this giant heaping pile of mess and uh, and saved us and built everything back up and saved us from our house. They're actually really big angels. They're not little. <laughs> New skylight. Oh yeah. Not bad, eh? Yeah. No hole in the ceiling. Yay! <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but I want to show you the skylight in the bathroom. Oh, wow. It opens. Yay, wow, that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> and that skylight, we have a stick to go up and open it up, right? The good thing about that is it'll draw the cool air from down low and push it all up there. So it'll actually cool your home. And it's old technology. We used to do this years and years ago. And it's funny, we don't do it anymore. If you have a skylight, you should be able to open it. So you can open it. That's great. Awesome. That's awesome. The guys worked on the roof when they took it off. And it took them probably I don't know, two solid days to rip it down to get it ready, and it was about the hottest time of the summer. But look at your new roof, just so you can see it. There's your new skylights. Mm -hmm. Remember how that's looked before? It was a mess with the scariest yeah. skylight. Once we got down to the original sheathing, which was plank board, we then restructured for all your skylights. Then we're going to strap it this way and then strap it this way. And what that does is allow cross air from up and over and allows this whole roof to breathe because we sprayed the underside. We want that to breathe. And those three vents at the end are your exhaust. Brand oh, chimney. chimney. <laughs> and this was our guys that did this. That's show. right. That was awesome. Yvonne that did that. Like, he is so good at what he does. Awesome. Beautiful roof. Our house is exactly what we thought we bought, but better now. Having everything fixed is the biggest wedding present. This is more than we could have hoped for. It's, um, you know, we get our house back, we get our life back, and we get to move forward. <laughs> you, you did seem to get us quite a big present, so we thought we might get a little token. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. You're kidding me. Can I have a hug? <laughs> <laughs> Come over here, buddy. Come over here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. To the crew who worked so hard Thank on your you job, I love them all. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to making it right.